Hi and welcome to another video of psychology to go. In this video we will take a look at Alzheimer's disease. Let's discover what it is, who is at risk and how the symptoms and current treatments look like. We all have heard about Alzheimer's disease and it is most often associated with the elderly. But what exactly is Alzheimer's disease? Alzheimer's disease is named after the German psychiatrist and neuropathologist Dr. Alois Alzheimer. In 1906, Dr. Alzheimer noticed changes in the brain tissues of a woman who had died of an unusual mental illness. Her symptoms included memory loss, unpredictable behavior and language problems. After she died, her brain had been examined and many abnormal clumps and tangled bundles of fibers were found. These plaques and tangles in the brain are still considered some of the main characteristics of Alzheimer's disease. According to the Centers of Disease Control and Prevention or short CDC, Alzheimer's disease is a progressive form of dementia. Dementia is a broader term for conditions which are caused by brain injuries or disease that cause problems with memory, thinking and behavior. The disease may begin with mild memory loss and symptoms can slowly worsen over time. As stated by the National Institutes of Health, Alzheimer's disease is currently ranked as the sixth leading cause of death in the United States, although a recent estimate indicates that the disorder may rank third, just behind heart disease and cancer as a cause of death for older people. The diagnosis happens after age 65. Everybody who is diagnosed before then has a so-called early onset of Alzheimer's disease. Even today there is still no cure for it. However, some treatments can slow down the progression of the disease. One of the great mysteries of Alzheimer's disease is why it largely strikes older people. This is why scientists around the world are studying how age-related changes in the brain may harm neurons or other types of brain cells. Some age-related changes caused by Alzheimer's disease include shrinking of certain parts of the brain or vascular damage. This leads us to the next part of this video. Who has Alzheimer's disease and more important, who is at risk of developing it? As the elderly population grows worldwide, the number of patients with Alzheimer's disease also increases rapidly. But before we dive into the risk factors, let's have a look at an interesting statistic. According to the Alzheimer's Association, Alzheimer's disease accounts for 60 to 80% of dementia cases. The greatest known risk factor is increasing age and the majority of people with Alzheimer's are 65 and older. But Alzheimer's is not just a disease of old age. Approximately 200,000 Americans under the age of 65 have younger onset Alzheimer's disease, also known as early onset Alzheimer's. Nonetheless, aging is not the only risk factor. Even scientists do not yet fully understand what causes the disease. What can be stated is that there is probably not just one single cause, but several factors that affect each person differently. Researchers believe that genetics may play a role in the development of the disease. More and more evidence is discovered that heart diseases such as high blood pressure and high cholesterol may also increase the risk of developing Alzheimer's disease. Lastly, people diagnosed with mild cognitive impairment MCI, are at greater risk. However, there is good news from the global research effort. For example, there is a growing evidence that mental, physical and social activities may reduce the risk of developing disease. Let's talk about the first signs and symptoms of Alzheimer's disease before we continue with their treatments. 
The first symptoms vary from person to person. Usually, memory difficulties are one of the first signs of cognitive impairment. Such memory difficulties can be diagnosed as a condition called mild cognitive impairment, short MCI. Individuals diagnosed with MCI have more memory problems than normal for their age. The signs can include losing things often, forgetting to go to appointments and problems with the sense of smell. According to the National Institute on Aging, next to memory problems, someone with Alzheimer's disease can experience one or more of the following signs. Memory loss that disrupts everyday life, such as getting lost in familiar places or repeating questions. Difficulties handling money or paying bills. Trouble finishing familiar tasks at home or work. Limited or poor judgment. Misplacing items and being unable to retrace steps to find them. Change in mood, personality or behavior. Common behavioral symptoms of Alzheimer's include sleeplessness, wandering, agitation, anxiety and aggression. If a person experiences some of the signs listed above, then it does not necessarily lead to Alzheimer's disease. However, it is recommended to consult a healthcare provider as soon as possible. An early and accurate diagnosis provides opportunities for the individual and their family members such as to review financial planning, enroll in clinical trials, and to find the right treatment. Keep in mind that Alzheimer's disease is an irreversible progressive brain disorder which can be differentiated in mild, moderate, and severe Alzheimer's disease. The earlier a diagnosis happens, the faster the right treatment can be found. Once this video hits a thousand likes, we will release a follow-up video on the stages of Alzheimer's disease and how they are diagnosed. So don't forget to like this video. Which brings us to the final part of this video. As earlier mentioned, there is currently no cure for Alzheimer's disease. It is unlikely that we will soon develop a wonder drug that can successfully treat it. However, the current treatment addresses several different areas. Helping people maintain mental function, managing behavioral symptoms, slowing or delaying the symptoms of the disease. Let's have a closer look at the first item of the list and learn more about currently available drugs. As stated by the National Institute on Aging, there are several medications approved by the US Food and Drug Administration, short FDA, to treat symptoms of Alzheimer's disease. Donepecil, Ribastigmine and Galantamine are used to treat mild to moderate Alzheimer's. Memantine as well as Donepecil can be used to treat severe Alzheimer's. The drugs work by regulating neurotransmitters, which are chemicals that transmit messages between neurons. This regulation of neurotransmitters may lead to a reduction in symptoms and may help with certain behavioral problems. The drugs cannot change the underlying disease process. Besides, they are not effective for all people and may only help for a limited time. And that's just about the end of the video. From mild cognitive impairment to severe Alzheimer's. I hope that the research in this field will soon lead to better therapies. Maybe some which target specific genetic, molecular and cellular mechanisms so that the actual underlying cause of the disease can be stopped or prevented. Let me know what you think in the comment section below and leave a like if you enjoyed that video. So thanks for watching it. This has been Patrick and you have been watching psychology to go if you just stumbled across this channel, feel free to subscribe. And I see you again soon for the next video. Cheers guys!